In this lesson, we learn about the sheen component of the Redshift material and how to create realistic fabric shaders in Redshift for Macs using the sheen component. Hey folks, welcome to MoGraph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to Redshift for 3ds Max. It's a massive 13 hours course in which we explore all the aspects of Redshift for Macs thoroughly. Make sure to check it out, the link is in the description. Also, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. If you take a look at this reference photo, you can start to see what makes fabrics look like fabrics. Look how the faces or polygons that are parallel to our viewing direction are darker and the perpendicular faces to our viewing direction become fuzzier and brighter. If you can simulate this, you can get realistic fabric shaders, and this is what Sheen Component is supposed to do. It is simulating microfibers and cloth-like surfaces or any sort of fuzziness on fruits and so on. Before creating any actual fabric shaders, let's take a look at the sheen parameters. So let's create a new redshift material and assign it to the geometry. Now start IPR. For a realistic fabric shader, you only need the diffuse and the sheen component plus any bump, normal, or displacement mapping. So for now, we can zero out the reflection weight. And for the diffuse color, use a dark gray color with the RGB value of around 10. In the sheen section, let's set the sheen weight to something like 0.5, and the sheen color is set to white by default. We immediately get that fuzziness at glancing angles, you notice how the parallel faces to our viewing direction are showing the defined darker diffuse color, and the perpendicular faces are showing the defined white sheen color. We have the sheen color that controls the color of the microfibers, and generally this should be a brighter, less saturated version of the diffuse color. For now, let's keep it at white. We also have the sheen roughness, which modulates how much the microfibers diverge from the surface normal direction. Basically using the roughness value, you can control where that fuzziness begins. By increasing it, it begins at lower angles from the parallel faces. And by decreasing it, the fuzziness starts at higher angles from the parallel faces. If I set the roughness to 0.1, you see how the sheen effect is limited to very extreme glancing angles, and if set to something like 0.6, now that sheen effect is more widespread and starts early, and sheen weight control how much the sheen component contributes to the final shader. So that's about the sheen component. Now let's make some realistic fabric shaders. First, we try to create a purple velvet shader. So create a new redshift material and assign it to the geometry. Zero out the reflection weight. For the diffuse color, use this dark purple. You notice it doesn't look like fabric at all because we still don't have that previously described attributes of fabrics. For something like velvet, set the sheen weight to 1 and sheen roughness to 0.2. And for the sheen color, let's use a brighter, less saturated color compared to our diffuse color. And now, as you can see, we get this nice velvet shader. Let's go for a blue velvet. Just copy the purple velvet shader and assign it to the geometry. To create a blue velvet, you just need to adjust the diffuse color and sheen color to a dark blue. And a less saturated, brighter color, a pale blue. And now you have a nice blue velvet shader. If we bring up the reference picture again and zoom in a tad, you notice we have this fabric pattern throughout, so let's add this pattern as well. So let me duplicate the purple velvet shader and assign the new shader.
load this fabric pattern image through an RS bitmap node. And we want to use this as the bump map, which is a data input, so let's change its color space to raw. Connect it to the texture input of a bump map node. And connect the bump node to the bump input of the redshift material. Set the bump height to around 0.2. To see how the fabric pattern texture sits on the geometry, let's temporarily connect it to the diffuse color input. You notice the pattern is too small on the geometry. Set the tiling of the fabric pattern image to 0.2 and 0.2 so it sits larger on the surface. Now we can disconnect this texture from the diffuse input of the material, and let's see what we get. And now we have this beautiful fabric pattern as well. Now let's create a crushed velvet, something like this photo right here. For this let's duplicate the original velvet shader. We need two base velvet shaders, one should be fairly brighter than the other one, then we mix the two to get the final crushed velvet look. Let's duplicate the material. For the new material use brighter base and sheen colors compared to our base shader. Now add a redshift material blender node and assign it to the geometry. Material blender shader allows you to stack up and mix materials. Connect the darker velvet shader to the base material color input. And connect the brighter shader to layer 1 color input. Load this texture called BW8. And use it as the layer 1 blend color input. Set the tiling for BW8 map to 0.2 and its color space to raw as it controls a data input. Now we are getting this nice and realistic crushed velvet shader. Next let's create a simple upholstery cotton fabric shader. So let's create a new redshift material and assign it. Zero out the reflection weight. Load the fabric pattern image again and set its tiling to 0.2. Connect it to the diffuse color. We want to use the same image for the sheen color as well, but we want it to be brighter compared to the diffuse color texture. So connect it to a color correct node. Now connect the color correct map to the sheen color input of the shader. Increase gamma to 3 in the color correct node so we get a quite brighter version of our original texture. Set the sheen weight to something like 0.6. Set the sheen roughness to something like 0.3. For the bump map, connect the original fabric pattern image to a bump map node. Set the bump height to 1 and connect the bump node to the bump input of the material. And here is our beautiful realistic cotton. While we are here, let's create a colored version of this. Simply duplicate the whole shader and assign it. Add a composite node which allows you to layer up textures and RGBA inputs. Use the fabric pattern image as the layer 1 input. 
For the second layer we need to have a simple color, so add a redshift color constant node. And connect it to the layer 2 input of the composite node. Use this light reddish brown as the color. Set the second layer blending mode to exclusion and connect the composite node to the diffuse color input of the material. And simply use the same composite node as the input for the color correct node that is connected to the sheen color. But we can decrease gamma to 2 in the color correct node. For this to look better, let's increase the sheen weight to something like 0.8. So it really depends on what you are looking for. If you want more of that fuzzy feeling, just increase the sheen weight. Let's see what we get. And there you have it. From now on you can skip the rest of the lesson as we'll be creating a bit more complex fabric shader. Skip the rest of the video or if you are curious, keep watching. Next let's go for a satin look. And for this one we won't be utilizing the sheen component as for satin if we take a look at this reference photo. You notice satin is different and the highlights are kind of playing with you, there is no well-defined pattern that you can describe, but I have a pretty good formula to create highly realistic satin or silk shaders and it involves curves. Let's create a new redshift material and assign it. Zero out the reflection weight and assign it to the fabric geometry. For silk, first we need a redshift Fresnel node. Let's add it and connect it to our diffuse color. If I change the facing color to white, perpendicular color to black, disable use index of refraction and finally set the curve fall off to 1. Now this frontal node outputs 0 or black for the perpendicular faces to our viewing direction and 1 or white for the parallel faces to our viewing direction. But we want to be able to remap these values, for this we can use an output node. Connect the Fresnel node to the map input of an output node. And connect the output node to the diffuse color of the redshift material. Now using this curve, we can remap these values to whatever we want. There is a particular curve that results in a very close look to satin or silk. We are trying to put the highest and brightest values to be a bit off of the exact parallel angles to our viewing direction. making the very frontal angles a bit brighter at something like 0.2. And a curve like this should give us a silk-like look. Just needs a bit more work to make it better. This should give us a really nice satin shader as you can see. The next thing would be to incorporate the specific colors that we are looking for. To do that we can use a color mix node. Connect the output to the mix amount input of a mix node. And the color mix itself will be connected to the diffuse color input of the material. For the input one color, let's use a dark purple. And for the input 2 color use this brighter shade of the same color. And you get a very realistic satin shader. To get a different satin color you can simply change the input 1 and 2 colors. First duplicate the satin shader and assign it. Let's use this dark and bright green colors. And here is our green satin shader. 
So that's about the sheen component of the Redshift material and creating realistic fabric shaders in Redshift for Max. See you in the next video. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com or our Gumroad page at gumroad.com slash mographplus and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Corona, V-Ray, Redshift, Octane and so on. See you in the next video.